Now, some people are going to be talking about how they can't review the 5060, but <laughs> we got the better one. This is the brand new NVIDIA GeForce 5027 piece of... Piece of ROPS. It's the Piece of ROPS edition. Uh, that's the, the S is from the end of ROPS. This is the common backwards acronym. You don't hear about them a lot, but... That's what we're here for. So this is made by a company called Cherry Tree, which we covered in a news episode a long time ago, and I'll explain why in a moment. But this is a video card, sort of, that they built. And it's actually a computer. The, the computer is in the video card. We brought you this video with our Patreon page at patreon.com slash gamersnexus. We self-fund all of our own travel and never charge companies to visit their own booths, allowing us to maintain independence in our field reports. We film their stuff because we think it's interesting, and sometimes we walk away. And that's all because we rely on Patreon, our usual background ads, and our store. Lately on Patreon, we've started a revitalization effort, and we've posted a new Patrons Ask GN episode with Q&A and a behind-the-scenes post about what we have coming up. If you want to support our independent reporting and the way we don't sell fully paid-for coverage, especially as these trips cost us sometimes tens of thousands of dollars for two weeks in the field, head over to patreon.com slash gamersnexus and sign up today. We have plenty more bonus posts coming. And as you can see here, this was once a gigabyte video card, but then we're told that FedEx destroyed it. And so it has become a full computer, and we get to test it. And yes, we are actually benchmarking this because it's probably still better than a 5060. So that's what we're looking at today. Now, Cherry Tree makes this. This is a Borg Cube, except it is a Borg Cube computer case. And I bought it a couple years ago. We never, we didn't ask for it. We tried to be undercover at the time. I'm guessing they probably figured out who we were, but I never actually asked, and we didn't make content for it. Now, the reason I think they probably figured out who we were is because they have a service on their website where you can have them make a custom cat-themed mini Borg cube to go on top of this one. And I asked them to make one. And I submitted a screenshot of Snowflake from one of our videos. So I don't know if they ever figured that out. I used an alias, but uh, I would assume they did. Anyway, they make this stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, this, I think this was like officially licensed and everything. And I'll probably do a build with it, maybe with BPS Customs or something like that. We need a good build project. So anyway, that's computer case. But that's not why we're here today. What we're here for today is the GFARS 5027 piece of sh ROPS edition. Uh, and I need to tear this down. Patrick has done testing for it. We've done acoustics. Now, you might want to know why. Sometimes it's nice to actually have fun with computer hardware. And uh, the smaller companies often make that possible. So they custom made this thing. We're going to open it up. You can see here, we'll do a walk around. Of the, they're not selling this, just to be clear. Like this is, they sent this to us and they were like, maybe this will be fun for you. And I said, yes, that will absolutely be fun. So they've hollowed out what was once the Gigabyte Shroud. They've replaced the Gigabyte logo with their own. Fair enough. And uh, colored it differently. It's still got the three fans. They work. They actually blow air into a separate NUC mini PC. So on this side of the card, there's actually a small computer. And you can even see it's I.O. here in the PCI expansion slot. Now, if you wanted to do it, if you built something like this, you could actually put this in to a computer and use it as a computer inside of a computer. Uh, it, it is not powered through the PCIe slot. It's purely decorative. This is not the old NUC where it was like, a PCIe card. It's a normal PCB NUC inside of this without the PCIe slot. Now for the rest, so they customized the power adapter. So it uses a barrel plug adapter, just plugs into a wall, but they customized it to fit this, what used to be eight pin connector. On this side, you see a bunch of wires and then also a switch. And that is our power button. I'm seeing some screws here. This one's colored silver. This one's colored silver. My assumption is that that's for a reason. And then we've got some others, which these would traditionally, I think, be to hold in the Gigabyte logo, from what I remember when we tore down a Gigabyte card. Normally, there's screws in the back. You can see a lot of those are missing this time. Uh, there are still two here. I'm sure there's a couple others we'll find along the way. So, so let's start with the silver ones here. We've got two to take out. There's a large screw. Oh, that's a short screw. Okay. What does it mean? It has to be like... I'm thinking this, this large one is symbolic of what it feels like to buy an NVIDIA RTX 5060. Just one large screw. And the small one is representative of the ROPs that are not in it. All right, let's see if that did anything. So 
That's promising. Anything on the bottom? A couple more on the bottom. Like how the switch is pretty nice, actually. We were kind of talking to Cherry Tree, and the question was more or less, but why? And the answer was, because fun. This is pretty sick. All right, so got a taped connector here. So that looks like, I and mean, that is an RGB connector. And that's the other side of it, adapted. The shroud is just a gigabyte shroud. I want to just treat this like a GPU teardown because I feel like that's what I'm doing, but this is a fin stack. Let's just do it. Who cares? So we'll, we'll go for it. It's got five heat pipes in it. It looks like these are probably six mil copper heat pipes. And then the fin stack over here would typically cover the VRM. So that'd be the MOSFETs, the inductors, one half the VRM. And then over on this side, it is missing. <laughs> so the rest of it is gone. I'm assuming the heat pipes go nowhere. We're going to find out pretty soon because uh, they should go into a, a cold plate that doesn't appear to exist. And that's fine. I don't think this needs a whole lot of cooling. Now, this looks like the actual cooling solution. Let's try to get to that. So how's the rest of this? We've got the LED strip here, zip tied in place. We've got a power cable here. I'm thinking it screws on the back. An interesting challenge. I, it's like somewhat fragile, so I don't want to break anything. It's an interesting approach. Which part? Uh, the standoff and the screw. Yeah. Oh, is there a standoff under there? Oh, yeah. Vitaly noticed the, uh, it did a screw into a standoff going through the back. That's actually pretty good. That's a, that's a clever, like, quick way to do it. Okay. NVIDIA need to take this in consideration. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's right. So, so Jensen, as we all know, four elephants. Four elephants. <laughs> one GPU. How is this assembled? There's one more. Okay. Oh, that's promising. I'm being more careful with this than with like $2,000 video cards. All right, so we're tied down by the cables. I think I need to clip the cable ties. Or maybe I can remove the power connectors, actually. Okay. That's promising. It's definitely a good idea that to not bring this through the TSA. I think the easiest thing to do is going to be to dismount the NUC. I don't have to remember how to put this together. It's like, what screws are on the shop floor today? There you go. That's a... This is the way. This is why they sent it to us. Okay. I'm not sure what these do. These are definitely power cables. It's just power and ground. I should... Are these the same? I should maybe mark these. I look forward to not knowing what that means in a few days when I put it back together. Wow, this is cool. Look at this. All right, that's creative. Check that out. So for whatever this is, oh, this is the switch. Yeah, see down here? So that's the, that's the power switch right there. So this is like the front panel connector. They've soldered the power switch into it. That's how you get the jump start. Um, so I guess they identified which pins on the NUC. I don't know if this is like a um, individually wired or if it's one large uh, power connector. I, I don't remember which NUC this is, but they identified it and they just hardwired the switch and that's, I can respect that, that's cool. This is very creative. All right, let's just defer over to the screw pile. So that'll be fun later. Uh, all right, there's the SSD. It is, you know what, the box actually tells us what this is. Let's just take a look. So uh, as you all know, memory capacity on NVIDIA's GPUs, it's, it's been a problem. And because we can barely get eight gigabytes in some cases, what Cherry Tree's done here with their revolutionary new GeForce 5027 POS edition, which is, as we all know, underclocked and overrated. 
what they have done with this revolutionary new technology is make it 64 gigabytes and two terabytes. Complain about that, Steve, from Hardware Unboxed. Is that enough VRAM for you? Two terabytes? Are you happy now? Are you not on the top of your roof to complain about how bad the NVIDIA GPUs are? So we've got a um, just wireless card here. So that's just running through. It looks like the antenna are running up here. And then otherwise, there's the 64 gigabytes of system memory. So that's team group memory. It is DDR4-3200. I suppose the SOC is under here. I'm, I'm really going to give it to Cherry Tree here. We've never worked with their stuff before. I've only ever covered it in news. And even though this isn't for sale, it's demonstrating a level of creativity that I would like to engage more with. I think it's adhesive. Yeah, that's adhesive there. Let's, I guess, disconnect it. The path of fan. Okay. I think it's this Mylar flow guide. Let's peel that. That would definitely take the fan off, but I'd prefer to leave it on and just pull the whole heat sink. None of this is necessary, but we've come this far. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> this is like a lot more work than a video card. There's the blower fan. This was butted up against the fin stack. So this tiny fin stack is the actual heat sink. This fin stack, <laughs> if you've ever wondered, I wonder what heat pipes look like inside. There it is. I mean, it's not as clean as, as a water jet, uh, but it's a pretty good cut. And those were centered copper powder heat pipes. So then there's uh, two heat pipes here, just routed right over the SOC. SOC's under that plate. And uh, that was our power cable, which was routed out to the barrel adapter. And the barrel adapter here, you can see they've creatively wired in the ground cables and power just straight into what used to be the 8-pin. It's a good thing they didn't use 12-volt high power for this. And then it looks like bundled a PCB down here for some kind of control. And then this resin plate, um, which we did get some information on. My understanding is they just did this for fun. It was basically like they needed a back plate, and so they just made this in the shape of the original PCB or something like that. So anyway... <laughs> That's the teardown. This thing's cool. I, I really like this. So that is the Cherry Tree, just one more time for NVIDIA, GeForce 5027 piece of shit edition. So that is what this is with all two terabytes and 64 gigabytes of various types of volatile and non-volatile memory. Uh, we're going to get into some of the testing now because we did do testing. And this, this is making me want to do something with this now. So not ready to yet. We'll talk about it when we're ready. I, I do, however, like the detail of Snowflake knocking one of the Enterprise variants off of the top of the Borg cube. That is pretty cool. And the paint job is pretty, pretty damn accurate, actually. So I'm assuming they figured out it was us years ago. But uh, if they didn't then surprise. All right, let's get into the benchmarks. Now getting into the more serious stuff. So briefly, the core specs for this we found include an Asus NUC 13 ANK-B system at its core, which of course everybody knows the spec for that by heart, by which I mean we looked it up and it has an i7-1360P, which we also had to look up. That has an integrated Iris XE graphic solution with six XE cores. It's got 64 gigabytes of system memory, DDR4-3200, as we saw. It's got an external power supply. The power supply is 20 volts, but Cherry Tree says it can also use a 12 volt PCIe power connector. We didn't try that though. All of this was built in what used to be a 2070 Super as well. So now for the serious, no jokes, very sincere testing plan. For some reason, we decided this was actually necessary. We kept things simple by performing our power, thermal, and acoustic testing simultaneously in our hemianechoic chamber. So, yes, we actually used our $250,000 noise testing chamber for 
the POS that we're testing today. I mean, that is the name of it. Before that, though, we had to select an appropriate workload. And we were told this system had run Doom 1 and 2, as well as Remedy's 2016 game Quantum Break, as seen in the Cherry Tree video. The 3D Mark Night Raid benchmark was built with iGPUs in mind. And according to UL, quote, it's an ideal test for laptops, notebooks, tablets, and other mobile computing devices, end quote. And that sounds perfect for a system built around an Asus NUC 13 Pro from a couple years ago. So here's a chart. We start off with a couple scored runs at averaging 19,029 points overall and 21,279 for graphics, 11,900 for the CPU. We don't have a database of night raid results because we don't normally need to use something this low end, uh, but since the 5027 POS is built inside the husk of a 2070 Super, we decided to stick one of those in the GPU bench for perspective. The discrete card installed on one of our dedicated GPU benches averaged 125,923 points in the graphics test, so... Uh, 492% increase over the POS. Cherry Tree absolutely nailed the marketing here. Unlike Nvidia, Cherry Tree is using appropriate names for what it's not even selling. The POS is, indeed, performing as its name suggests. While running the night raid tests, we found that the CPU portion was the most power hungry, so we used that on a loop for the combined thermal power and noise test. We let the system idle for three minutes and then ran the CPU load for 10 minutes. Starting with power, we knew that we wouldn't see anything over 120 watts since that's all the AC adapter can supply. Each loop of the CPU test peaked at around 84 watts as measured from the wall with an absolute maximum peak during one of the loops at 87.72 watts. These peaks are about 10 watts higher than the total system power value logged by Hardware Info, but we'd expect wall power to be higher for various reasons like efficiency. At idle, the system pulled between 10 to 14 watts. PL2 for the system is 64 watts. PL1 is 43. During the same test, P cores averaged at 75 to 76 degrees Celsius. We would pick a steadier sustained workload for serious daily testing, but this works fine for the 5027 POS. E cores peaked around 70, and graphics cores peaked around 60. It's actually doing pretty damn well. Like, they credit to Cherry Tree for making a joke that actually works. The single stock blower fan from the original Nux CPU heatsink ramped immediately as the workload started, and it moved between several clearly defined speed thresholds as necessary, peaking at 3600 RPM. The GPU fans, although functional, are not on a curve and don't expose their speed to the motherboard. On to noise. So the fan ramp was clearly noticeable from an acoustic perspective, measured at a distance of one meter facing directly into the system's fan. I don't know why we're doing this, but it's fun. <laughs> facing directly into the system's fans. The biggest frequency spike was around 340 hertz, presumably from the always-on GPU fans that pull constant power from the NUX internal USB headers. Under load, the 340 Hz spike remained, but as the blower fan ramped up, a spike appeared at 1544 Hz. As the fan transitioned between speed thresholds, the spike moved up and down to various stages between 1515 and 1850 Hz. For total noise level, the 5027 POS idled at 33 to 34 dBA SPL at 1 meter, at the loudest point, we measured about 41.5 dBA SPL. And honestly, again, even though the testing here is kind of jokey, uh, this thing's built well for something that is just supposed to be fun. So very impressed with what Cherry Tree put together. So that's it for this one. And thank you, Cherry Tree, for giving me something interesting to work on that's not just doom and gloom. If you want to see doom and gloom, though, there's a video on Wendell's channel at Level 1 Techs that I'm in, and the thumbnail says, Woo! Doom and gloom. Uh, I think the next thing we're going to do with this is I, I'm probably going to just actually build with this now. So I don't know if I've shown the backside yet, but that's the backside. It's got the fans in it. You can see the computer slots in there. So I think it's uh, it's time to find something fun to do with this. We'll have to do a low heat load because there's not a, place, a lot of places for the air to get out. But that's the nature of a, a Borg cube. You know, the, the Borg, they really should have thought of that when they started just assimilating things. They really didn't plan ahead very far. But uh, shout out to uh, BPS Customs. Brian, we've been looking for a build project. I think this is probably the one next time you get some time. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to support us directly, like by grabbing one of the mod maps that I worked on in this video. And uh, if we don't get the 5060 review up for a little while because NVIDIA planned it that way, then consider this our 5060 review. I actually don't because I, I actually like this. So... Never mind. This is this is what it should have been. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.